Sound levels are good? Yep, sounds good. We're not getting too much wind or anything like that? No, nope, solid. So the 400 mil, what else am I going to get to shoot all these landscapes with today, Jordan? That's it. What do you mean that's it? That's all we got. I'm shooting landscapes with a 400? Welcome back DP Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here from DP Review and welcome to the beauty that is Southern Alberta. It is gorgeous out here. We've got a cool adventure today. We're traveling through the back country, but it is always windy in this part of Alberta. So do please bear that in mind with the audio today. And what we're doing today is we're gonna play with the brand new 400 mil 2.8 G Master lens. This is very special because this is really the first prime, fast, high quality telephoto made for a mirrorless camera in full frame. And uh, you know, there isn't anything like this. This really puts Sony on par with a lot of the big guys when it comes to shooting things like sports and action. And I know you've probably seen tons of reviews already, lots of soccer shots all in focus. Well, we're going to do something different because, frankly, Canada never makes it very far in the World Cup anyways, so we're kind of tired of hearing about the footy. What we're going to do today instead is go out and shoot, hopefully, some wildlife and some beautiful landscapes. And I guess my challenge today, as you've already heard, is I only have the 400mm 2.8 lens. And, you know, that's a pretty big package, but I'm going to make it work for you. So stick around. Should be a good one. So bringing a monopod along is always a great idea when you are shooting a long lens, but uh, what's an even better idea is bring a monopod with an Arca Swiss plate. In my defense, I think Sony should have cut the standard Arca Swiss dovetail into the shoe. You know, a lot of other manufacturers are starting to do that now. It makes a lot of sense. It's super helpful, but still, I didn't bring it. Now that being said, one of the best parts about this 400mm lens is the fact that it is so lightweight. Just under 6.5 pounds, about 2.7 kilograms, thanks largely to a lot of magnesium construction. What they've also done is pushed a lot of the weight towards the camera body. I've got the Sony A9 on here, I'm using the battery grip, but it is balanced quite nicely and it's fairly comfortable to hand hold. You know, you compare this to the Canon 400mm 2.8, this is substantially lighter and that lens was already way lighter than its original predecessor. So, you know, this really is Sony giving us that kind of benefit we were always hoping for with a mirrorless camera. It is comparably lighter and smaller to an SLR outfit, at least right now. You know what's incredibly frustrating, Jordan? No, what, Chris? Trying to get a butterfly mid-flight with a 400 millimeter lens. Almost impossible. Maybe impossible. I'll get you. It's too, too tight, Jordan. Too tight, I need like a 200 mil lens. And when it comes to the image quality on this 400mm 2.8, it's honestly something I don't really want to really cover only because I don't feel I need to. I mean, all the reports are that this lens is fantastic optically, sharp to the corners, even wide open. I mean, Sony's really achieved something quite amazing here optically, but at the same time, especially in the context that we're shooting today, I remember that Jordan and I, we worked at a camera store, a lot of people would bring back these big lenses and say, oh, they're not very sharp. What they were really dealing with was long distances and having to deal with atmospheric haze or having to deal with temperature shifts, just the heat of the day causing a loss of resolution and that sort of wobbly mirage kind of look. And so in a lot of cases, you gotta be careful when you use these lenses. Shooting long distances, you're not always gonna get ideal conditions. But when the conditions are ideal, this lens is killer. I'm desperately trying to find a gray grasshopper on a gravel. Oh, there he is, hang on. Can you see the cricket there? The close, there it is. So right now, late July, we actually got beautiful wildflowers coming out here up in the meadows. And uh, I'm playing with the 400 mil. Of course, it's very long, but you get beautiful bouquet. At 2.8, I can just kill the background. So I'm having fun with that. Uh, suffice to say, it's tough to get your focus accurate, especially with that thin depth of field, but there's some nice features on the side of this lens that help me out. Of course, I've got my autofocus manual focus selector, and I've also got a standard limiter, full 
close up 2.7 to 7 meters and long distance 7 meters to infinity. But now this is new and this is not something you see on mirrorless lenses. You see this all the time on classic SLR telephotos. I've got a full time dynamic manual focus control and I can turn that on or off. Basically it lets me keep autofocus running but anytime I want I can just grab this manual focus ring and set it here doing that with this selector switch. I've also got this power ring right in front of it and this is pretty cool. So far I've only got in this 3.01 firmware two options. I can set this to do a power focus almost like a camcorder style slow focus could be handy if you're doing video but I can also set it to do an APS-C crop and then back to full frame crop if I want. I'm actually using it for manual focus and again, when I'm trying to get this very thin depth of field stuff going, that power focus is actually really nice because I can slowly rack it till I get right where I want it to be. Okay, so that's a good example of the minimum focusing distance here. Although I'm enjoying the wildflowers, I'm probably getting covered in ticks. So you're going to search me, right, Jordan? You'll check all my... I got you covered, buddy. You'll check all my orifices. You got it, man. You're, it you're a good friend. You know, honestly, holding this lens here, I mean, yeah, I should have a monopod or something, but I'm walking around, hiking around, and really it's surprising how hand holdable this is. Not just because of the lightweight and the image stabilization being excellent, but also uh, with the A9 that I'm shooting on, the electronic shutter also makes it very, very easy to get sharp pictures. Now in classic G Master fashion, Sony's put a lot of emphasis on nice bokeh here, and it is super silky smooth. 11 blade aperture system, nice round rendition, and minimal cat's eyeing, although you do see it in the corners. Now, as far as flare goes, you know, I'm going to do some shots out here, but, you know, just shooting right into the sun, it's actually still very well controlled, not getting much ghosting at all. Neat sun stars are an option if you do want to close it down to a tight aperture. Well, that's not something you often do on a long lens like this. And if you're shooting with the sun just outside the frame, this big hood does a great job. Of course, it's easy to optimize it for this prime focal length. And one more thing about the hood that I want to point out, we've got this very obvious orange ring on here, Sony's classic trademark color now. But that's a smart thing because if you're out there on the football field or the baseball pitch doing a sporting event, anyone who looks at that is going to start recognize this as a Sony lens. Now on the tripod collar, you've got a nice smooth rotation. It can't be removed, but there is a little panel here on the side. And with a slot screwdriver, you can set this so that it either makes a click when it hits 90 degree increments or is silent. I don't know. Someone might find that very, very useful. I'm not sure, but there it is. It's funny, it's an expensive lens, but I'm already taking for granted how nice this texturized grip is. I don't, I don't really remember any other telephotos that have that. Now, when it comes to autofocus on this lens, you can see Dan Bricalia from DeepyRview.com's test. He shot the soccer match, had great results. I mean, you've got this new linear motor in this lens. It's driving those big, heavy elements nice and quick. And, you know, what we were hoping to see is just some wildlife today. We got lucky. We were driving on the road. We've seen a deer and we've seen some other stuff. But we got a raptor looking for his next meal. Not an amazing autofocus test because he's not moving in distance towards and away from us quickly. But still, I was able to track him and shoot him. The continuous AF was great. There was no hunt no loss onto the background or anything and uh, the other thing I noticed about it is it's very very quick you know from out of focus right to that bird bam lightning fast so although we're not testing the autofocus in a big way here I can say that this lens is performing very nicely with all the stuff that we're shooting today Hey everyone, it's Jordan, the video guy and driver today. Talk about the 400 millimeter for video shooters. And one thing I've been asking for forever that we're starting to see is linear focus by wire lenses. This is one of them. So you, when you twist the lens, no matter what speed you use, you're gonna wind up in the same place. It's not quite as good as a mechanical system because there's no hard stops on it, but still it's a huge improvement. Thank you, Sony, for that. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about though is this is a very loud lens. I could hear it in Chris's mic all the time while he was shooting today. So just be aware, you're not going to want to use this lens with the camera's internal mic while the focus and stabilizer are going on it. But I like to think if you've got $12,000 to throw at a lens, you could probably grab a shotgun mic or a wireless system. 
One thing that kind of gives me hope with this though is the amount of custom buttons that they've littered the lens with. And I love this as an option. You've got these small mirrorless bodies without a lot of controls on them. Move some of those onto the lens. I would love to see a more video centric lens like this, but give me buttons for my waveforms, for example, or my audio levels, or even dials for my audio levels on it. I love the idea of moving some of the controls off the body onto the lens. I'd love to see that for video shooters and just any other style of specialized photography. Yeah, we've hit golden hour, we're heading home. And I guess from, from all of this that we've done today, I just want you to get a few takeaways. So first thing is, yes, this is a very expensive lens, no doubt, but so are the Nikon and Canon counterparts. And you know, really what I did like that Sony did here is although it's a pricey lens, they gave us a lot with it. Great optical performance, well built and lots of features. I mean, this whole panel here, having all of this, none of it really feels like fluff. I actually really enjoyed using a lot of the manual focus controls. Uh, you know, you've got things like a preset focus control and even that mode three in the stabilizer, I really enjoyed when I was shooting that bird, that raptor flying around. You know, the stabilizer's there, but it's predicting what direction I'm going and making it easier to follow him and not have to fight the stabilizer. I did notice that. So we're getting a lot of features, and I think the key thing is, versus a Canon or Nikon rig, if you showed up with this on an A9 body to a wildlife event or a sports event, you're not gonna feel undergunned. Now, another big takeaway on this lens is that it is a much lighter and smaller package than the other cameras, but it is still a big lens. And you know, how I'd say is this, I was walking around today, I forgot my monopod plate, so I wasn't using it. And you know, for getting out of the car, hand holding this thing on an animal, taking some shots, taking some clicks, hiking with it, it actually was fantastic. I mean, this is something we haven't really had out of another camera system while still getting that full frame chip and that 2.8 aperture. It really is that much more portable. However, if I was holding this in a valley waiting for animals to come out, or if I was shooting a sporting event where I'm gonna be on the sidelines for a long period of time, yeah, you still need a monopod, okay? I mean, you're not gonna hold this in your hands for, 10 minutes, you're gonna still start shaking. But for somebody who wants to be really portable, this does represent a very interesting achievement that the bigger SLR kits just can't quite touch. You know, we talked about how this was really the last area that Sony needed to, to take hold of in order to really compete against the other brands, and now they've done it. And, you know, I can say all I really hope for is that maybe we'll see some F4 lenses in the long range, some 5.6 lenses perhaps, to get even more portable, and maybe some fast glass for the APS system. That would be nice nice, but this is a step in the right direction. Professionals, sports photographers, you know, anybody doing Olympics and stuff in high level, they're going to love this lens. It's pricey, but if somebody wants to do birding or wildlife, you know, an amateur enthusiast, and they've got the budget for it, they are going to love the lighter weight and the quality they get out of this lens. You know, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this review as always. Don't forget, leave comments below. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Go to dpreview.com and see the sample photos of this lens again. That's a great way to see what it can really do. And until next time, hope to see you soon.